So, Elise and I made some sauerkraut earlier this week, and it was pretty fun, wasn't it? Yep. So one of the strateg strategies I'll be teaching about in the class is how to get not only yourself, if you're not into fermented foods, but your kids and your spouse or your nieces, your nephews or whoever else to have actual buy-in to um, trying and getting motivated. So Elise has never had sauerkraut before, have you? Nope. Nope. So this will be her first time. Um, so we've already done one strategy. We have let her be a part of the process. And you did all, you made this, didn't you, by yourself? Yep. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So our sauerkraut only lasted about, let's see, let me smell. Oh yeah, only needed to ferment about four or five days. The counter where it was at was pretty warm. Often you can do seven to 10, it just depends. But this is the perfect sauerkrautiness for us. So we're gonna start with, don't mind my, I did wash my hands, sorry about that. So we're gonna start with a little piece of carrot. Um, just a bite of carrot, don't, can you smell it? Don't eat it yet. Is, I mean, we can't exactly measure the amount of good bacteria that's growing on it, and that's gonna be part of the process, but we can know from other people who have studied these kind of things that there's upwards in the thousands of beneficial uh, bacteria and a variety of strains <laughs> Does it smell good? That are going to be on this little piece of carrot that Elise is going to try. So, you know, just a really effective way to get in and increase your microbial diversity. So, give this a try and tell me what you think. You can be honest. How do you feel like it tastes? A little spicy and also tasty. A little spicy, yeah. So, when you ferment things, they kind of get tangy. Do you think tangy is a good way to describe it? I don't know what tangy means. Okay, so we know you like carrots already, right? Mm -hmm. You love carrots in real life. Try this little piece here. It's kind of tangy too. It's maybe a little more tangy. What do you think about that? A little more spicy and a little more tasty. You liked it okay? Mm -hmm. So, would you say you're pretty picky? Or are you, you can be honest, are you kind of a picky eater? Do you like all foods or just some foods? Some foods. Yeah. I don't like all of the foods. Yeah. Some soups I don't like, some soups I do like. Yeah, most, yeah, most soups you don't like though. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. So even when you have picky eaters, a nibble or two is increasing this healthy microbial diversity, not only in her mouth and in her teeth, but what's going on in her gut. And a few bites a day, um, incorporated in lots of different ways. So if she wasn't gonna eat it, I was gonna take some of this cream cheese mixture that we have from one of our other videos we made on how to make whey. I was gonna put a little bit of this homemade cream cheese on a little chip and you wanna try that? You do, cause you love cream cheese. Um, um, as just another strategy of introducing these things, your palate, if you don't like fermented foods and those of your kids will change your body, this look good. Your body wants and needs this type of nutrition and it will adapt. So this is a little bit more. Do you think you can handle that much? Yes. Okay. So I hope you sign up for the class and we'll learn lots of different strategies on how to increase your microbial diversity, why it's important, why it makes a big difference and is gonna follow you and your kids throughout their lives and some easy ways to incorporate them. Um, I do not have time to spend hours a week fermenting or doing other things, but this is one of those easy things that we can do. Okay? Elise just had her probiotics for the day, so she's good to go. All right, I hope you guys sign up. If you have any questions, let me know.